Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this, the 11th in a series of video tutorials on how to create a first person shooter in Unity 5. So this episode we're going to carry straight on from where we left, our, uh, left off in our last episode, where we started creating this switch for this door. So I'm going to open up the Open Door 001 script in uh, Mono Develop, and we're going to modify this code a little bit. So firstly, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to put a new variable, which is going to be our door. So var, let's call it the door, and that is going to be a game object. Okay, so let's head back to Unity, and if you remember, we've still got this named as cube. So I'm going to right click, rename, I'm going to call it door 001. Now, what we need to do here is we need to modify our function update section and we need to use a nested if. Um, what this means is having an if statement inside an if statement. So the first thing we need to do is we need to check if we're pressing a certain button, in this case the E button on our keyboard. So we need to put if, open bracket, input dot get button down, and that's capital I on input, and G, uh, capital G, capital B, capital D on get button down, open bracket, quote, and I'm going to type the word action, quote, close bracket, and open curly bracket. Now, you can use any word you want. If you want to use the word Jupiter, if you want to use the word curtain, you can, as long as you know what it means. You'll see why in just a second. So this is where the nested if statement comes in. Once we've checked if we're pressing this action button, which will be the E button, we need to check if our distance is close enough to the switch to actually press it. So we're using the same if statement we've got in on mouse over function. So if the distance is less than or equal to two, then we need to perform the following. So I'm going to leave a couple of lines blank there just for now. We'll fill in uh, that little bit in later on this tutorial. So I'm going to close curly bracket to finish off that if statement and then close curly bracket to finish off the original if statement and save. So now we need to define action. It needs to be an actual name. In fact, before we go any further, I've missed off a close bracket there. So you should have two close brackets at the end of that if statement. So let's save that again. Head back into Unity and then go to Edit, go to Project Settings and then Input. This is where we need to define um, the action button. So over here in your inspector pane you should now have um, a list of different functions which can be used in Unity. I think by default it should be set to 18, but yours may be higher, maybe lower. Whatever number this is here, just add one to it. So I'm going to put 19 and hit enter. Now usually it'll duplicate the last entry you have in this list. In this case for me, it's cancel. So click the arrow to open. And I'm going to call this action. So when we referenced the script before, if you put the word Jupiter there, or if you put the word house there, and make sure that same word is there. It's probably wise to use the word action or something along those lines just so you can understand what it means. So in the positive button, make sure the other three are left um, blank above it and just put E. If you don't want to use the letter E, if you want to use the letter P, you put P there, whatever. I think by general standards, are uh, it's the E button. Uh, Alt negative button, leave blank as well. So if we head back to our script now, we've now set our input correctly. So we'll be checking if we're pressing the E key on our keyboard. And if we are, then we'll check in if we're close enough to the switch and then we'll perform some actions. So the actions that we're gonna put in here need to be done in a separate function on this script. So function, and we can make up a name for this function. So I'm gonna put uh, something real simple, open the door open close bracket and open curly bracket. 
So what this function is going to do is it's going to run a script in itself which will open and then close the door within a certain time limit. And if you remember when we did the animation for our door, click on the animation tab, door should be there. The entire animation lasts for two seconds. The first half, the first second, the door opens. The second half, it closes. So we need to keep that in mind. What we need to do is we need to access the animator component within our door to open it. And we can do that by the door, which was our variable up here, dot get component, and open bracket, quote, and then animator, quote, close bracket, dot enabled, equals true, and then semicolon. So we've activated our animator component for our door. Next thing we need to do is we need to wait for one second while it opens. So yield, wait, four seconds, open bracket, one, close bracket, semicolon. After our second, we then need to disable our door. So we need to turn off the animator. So the door, dot get component, open bracket, quote animator, quote, close bracket, dot enabled, equals false, and semicolon. So I'd like our door to stay open for, let's say, five seconds. So yield, wait for seconds, open bracket, five, close bracket, semicolon. If you want your door open for, say, 10 seconds, just put number 10 there. So now we need to repeat the process of enabling our animator to close the door. So the same function applies. The door dot get component open bracket animator dot enabled equals true. So yet again we need to wait for one second. Yield wait for seconds one and then after that we need to turn off the animator so you guessed it the door dot get component animator dot enabled equals false semicolon and then let's finish the function with a close curly bracket so the next thing we need to do is we need to get this function operating only when both of these if statements are met. Really easy to do. If you head below this, where we've got if the distance is less than or equal to two, all you need to put is the function name, which is open the door, then open close bracket and semicolon and save that script. So now if we head back into Unity, Give it a second just to load the script into itself. We shouldn't have any errors, I don't think. Let's clear our console, that's right. Now if we click on our switch, you'll see down here we have the new variable called the door. So we just need to drag and drop the door into this little box here. So now, whenever our script references the door, it's talking about this object right here. So let's press play. And with any luck, if we go over to our door, let's press the E key now. There we go. So it isn't working. Let's go to the switch, press the E key, and our door opens. And it should close any second. There we go. So that is our entire script in action. And there we go. Okay, so next thing we'll do is you probably saw just then as I stop pressing play, we're going into negatives with our gun. So we can infinitely fire. Let's resolve that now. Best way to do it, I'm not going to go into too much detail on it this episode, we'll probably leave it mostly till next episode when we work with other guns as well. So first one we're going to go into is gun fire. And we need to stop the actual um, whole sort of script happening if 
it's a um, zero because we don't want anything to happen. So we need to put before any of the uh, script itself, but after the function update, we need to reference the global ammo script and we need to check if it's greater than or equal to one. So if then open bracket and it's global ammo, oops, I spelled global wrong, global ammo dot loaded ammo is greater than or equal to one, then do the following, which is doing this if statement, check if we're pressing the correct button. And if it is, if, it, if it's less than one, basically, then we don't do anything at all. So let's save that. Now we need to um, apply that to two other scripts as well, which is cross animate. So here in the function again, we need to do it as the first line. So if, and then the global ammo dot loaded ammo is greater than or equal to one, do the following. And then we need to close that and save. And the last one we need to do is handgun damage. Yet again, just after the update, if global ammo dot loaded ammo is greater than or equal to one, do the following. So if it isn't, then we just do nothing basically and save. So to put this into practice, let's head back to Unity and it just has to quickly load in the scripts, the alterations. It shouldn't take a second. So if we press play now and we attempt to fire our gun, we can't. We absolutely can't. So if we click some ammo, we can then fire our gun. And we get to zero and we can't do it anymore. There we go. Okay, so next episode, um, we're going to look at uh, another gun and probably some reload functions. So when our ammo's run out, we press the R key and we can reload. So th there's a lot of things to do with mechanics again now. So we're going to get back into a bit more mechanics before we get into some more world stuff. And we'll gradually build ourselves up. Um, so the um, door script that we wrote today... Last episode, I put uh, the script that we'd finished on the website. I'll also put the complete version of it now on the website, just in case you wanted to um, download it again. It's up to you. Uh, I would I would recommend trying to do the script yourself, because realistically you learn by doing. But if you want to cheat and just download the script, then by all means, that's entirely up to you. It's what it's there for. Um, so yeah, we'll leave that tutorial there. Uh, next episode, as I say, we'll do some more coding. So until then, uh, thank you very much for watching.